Hey folks, welcome to a beautiful day in the canyons, although it is about three hours later than we normally <laughs> start the video, and we'll get to why that is in a second, Boy, but will we? the downside is there might be some cars out here today. There wasn't really a way around it. This is the 2021 Mustang Mach-E, although to say Mustang does make me cringe a little bit. It's not a big problem. As we say, it's not a hill worth dying on, uh, but it is awkward to say a uh, Mustang about an electric crossover. Mach-E is less weird. I'm kind of yeah. okay saying Mach-E. That doesn't bother me really at all. Um, it comes in four flavors as of right now. Uh, the regular battery and the big battery, mm -hmm. and then all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. Okay, the regular battery, rear-wheel drive, 230 miles, all-wheel drive, 211 miles. Okay, 266 horsepower. The extended range battery, rear wheel drive, 305 miles, 290 horsepower. This one, all wheel drive, big battery, 270 miles, Ford's mm -hmm. estimate, not EPA, Ford's estimate, 346 horsepower, 428 torque. Like it. I like Good it. Good numbers. I yeah, like and it. And pretty much in line with the top of the competition, which is Model Y, Model 3. Right. Well, this would compete with a Model 3 or Model Y long range. Yes. And then the GT version of this is coming out later with more power, uh, a bigger motors, a magnetic ride control, mm -hmm. and a more sport-oriented tire. Right. Okay? So this thing uh, is 56000 bucks as tested, uh, forty eight five after the tax credit, 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. It's a single-speed gearbox. Battery in the floor. You can I see it when you open the doors. There's about a 7, 8-inch battery pack in the floors. That's why these crossovers work for the EVs, because it's a good place to hide an 8-inch thick brick in the floor of a vehicle. But this is not that tall as right. far as cars go. This is actually, I looked this up, is amazing. This is only, th the roof line is only three and a half inches taller than an RS6. So this oh, is like, interesting. this is a SUV, yeah. but it's barely taller than a car. Do you remember six it's more months more like ago? a hatchback on rims. Remember when I got real mad and I said they're selling us crossovers and slowly lowering them to get us to buy wagons? Yeah. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. But that's okay. It's okay. It's real. Yeah. It's, it's less frumpy and more sleek Looked in good. person than it looks in pictures, yes. right? This one has 19-inch wheels, continental uh, range-focused tires. So that's, they're summer of seasons, but range focused. So, you know, not the optimum. Uh, this one is, uh, has a fast charging capability, mm -hmm. the DC fast charging. And uh, Ford says with the fastest possible charge, which is a 150, you get a 10 to 80% charge in 38 minutes. Um, we don't love the public charging network. Can we yeah. talk about that at the end? Let's go drive. drive. Let's yeah. go for a drive. So single speed, all-wheel drive. Let's hit it. Guys, when we're out in the mountains filming, there is like nothing to eat out here. And we're out here for hours sometimes. We rely on bars. And that's why Built Bar is sponsoring this episode. Their bars come in all different flavors, salted caramel, cookies and cream. This one is Apple Almond Crisp. And I literally haven't tried it once yet, but it looks delicious. And I'm going to try it live on this ad. And I'm not a very good liar, so if this isn't delicious, you're probably going to know. Oh, that's nice. That was really good. Yeah, apple pie, like some kind of marshmallowy things happening. Good chocolate. It doesn't taste like protein powder, but there's a bunch of protein in it. Hmm, that is really good. That's really nice. Hit the link in the description, guys. These are actually really delicious. I'm gonna live off these for like the next month while we're filming. How, how exciting is that? Guys, hit the link in the description and use code TST at checkout. Special TST discount on these built bars. They're delicious, they're nutritious, and they're gonna keep me going as we finish this mock e shoot. Look at that. That's nice. I actually like it. That's really good. I'm surprised. I don't normally like protein bars. Normally they're like chalky. You know, you can like you can taste that they took a candy bar and then basically just poured protein powder into the mixture. You can like taste protein powder. But it definitely tastes more like candy than health food. Go oh, DST. Get these. <laughs> Four wheel burnout. Oh, d dirt burnouts are fun even when they're quiet. When you turn off traction control, it will do four wheel burnouts. Oh, Woo! Think of the high school kids that are going to get up to trouble when they borrow their parents' right? electric cars and no one can hear them doing burnout. 
Well, that's interesting. You are much more likely to drive like a total dick bag if you're going to do it in silence, for mm-hmm. sure. So, I'm sorry, there's there's some things in the trunk I couldn't strap all of them down. I apologize if you can hear them. This thing has three drive modes. Engage, whisper, and unbridled. <laughs> We're in unbridled mode right now. And as you can see, you know, to say 0 to 60 in 4.8 is a little bit not totally descriptive of how quick the car feels. And that's because unlike a Tesla, this doesn't have some crazy dragster launch mode, right? It pretty much just flows the juice. The in, you know, in pace acceleration is pretty good. See, there's your really tiles wheel, good. right? When it, it's got a good platform, low center of gravity, right? Oh, oh boy, things, see, the handling is good because things are flopping about. I mean, it seems like it corners quite well. Right. It seems lighter than it actually is. What does this thing weigh again? It's like 5,000 pounds yeah. of all-wheel drive. So, so the steering yeah. is very RC car, like not a lot of directness, or uh, excuse me, not a lot of feedback, but it is very sharp and direct, right? Weak point number one of the handling, tires. Weak point number two, shocks. Both will be addressed in the GT version. Well, what do you not like about the shocks? Because I, I, my time in this car, <laughs> like, I found it to be comfortable, quiet on the highway. It doesn't have a ton of body roll here right. in the corners. So. Right. So that's when I say weak point, what I mean is they're comfort oriented. Hmm. It's lovely on the street. Like... Oof. It's, and the handling is not it's pretty terrible. good, right? That's pretty what I'm good. I'm sitting here, and this thing is—it's not wallowing over. It's not no. touching door handles. Like <laughs> I, a Miata leans far more than this. There's a lot of cars that lean a lot more than this. You can toggle the one pedal driving Jeez. on or off. I'm on the one pedal right now, which I like. Although you have to get used to how you use the brake pedal, right? When you're on the one pedal you can sort of still dial up your regen by brushing the brake. So when you lift, you get your regen, right? Mm-hmm. But if I brush the brake, I get a little more regen. And, and then before you, dip before you get into the actual brake pads. And so you have to reprogram your, your body a little bit to use that feature. I gave it to Hannah to drive. She loved it but she immediately wanted one pedal turned off and wanted it to just be more like a normal car. And she was happy with that. And so you can toggle. Is that because she wasn't used to it? No, I mean, it it, it is interesting. This is pretty impressive. It's like... I have traction control turned off right now. So when you turn it off, I mean, it it really, it's off. I mean, it's all wheel drive and your center of gravity is low, but it's off. (laughs) It's not, they're not messing around. That's off. so let me just slow just down and gather car. thoughts for a second while we cruise. I've had this thing for six days. I took it on a little road trip to test the range. Mm-hmm. I did without even trying. That's a separate video. Maybe I shouldn't give it away. Maybe we should bleep that out. How many miles I went without trying. You gotta watch the other, you gotta watch the range video to get that. Watch number. the range video. And we're gonna go this way. And uh, it's very practical. It's it feels very well made, especially yeah. for a pre-production car. It looks really well made. I mean, the, the tolerances, the stitching, like the, the, the materials they selected in here, I'm really impressed with. I think the design is, is beautiful, really. Yeah. It's like, uh, reminds me of an i3, but it looks more modern because the i3 screens nowadays look so old. It's it, a really good job. It drives like a lot like a Tesla drives. It, like a lot like a Model 3, a lot like a Model Y. The, the sensations and all that stuff is pretty much the same. Um, where it is different is they don't lie to you and say that it will drive itself now or ever. That's that's a, They don't do that. It doesn't fart. Um, some people, uh, uh, having a car that doesn't fart, I that's mean, it deal. might be a deal breaker. That's a big deal. It definitely could be a deal breaker. I know that there are certain people who said, I will never buy a car that isn't a meme again. Um, right. but, I mean, you know, farting uh, well, seems this like truck, a, a part of American culture. It is. You know? We'll flip around. Here's How about turning radius? I like this. It's got some ground clearance. You can just flip around. Mm-hmm. Turning radius is not mind-blowing, but still pretty good. Pretty good. Still pretty good.
The power it's is quick great. Enough. Totally power quick is great. Enough. I mean, it's not going to win the drag race against the Model S or something like that. But and those are just the things that grab headlines. Yeah. But usable power. What, pe what people who buy the cars actually do with them, it's very, it's more than sufficient. And oh, by like, the way, we're, we're going whipping. Quick. Yes, we're yeah. going quick. <laughs> whipping. This is not even the fast one. This is like the middle one. Yeah, it, the first time you took me for a ride, you took me around this cloverleaf on-ramp, and I was looking at the speed we were going, how smooth it felt, how capable it felt, and I was really impressed. It, it surprised me with the performance. This doesn't have the good tires. It doesn't have the great shocks. See what I did there with the bra the brush, mm -hmm. the brake? That was on the, the regen there. Wow. So that's cool, right? Yeah, it's very cool. It's a new this way to drive. This whips. Yeah, this it is... It goes This is a really, very really sporty good. automobile for yeah. people that are watching. Like, and, uh... You know, I like the radar cruise control a lot. We're going to go in the funky section. People like seeing the funky section in videos because it just looks crazy in the cameras. And it is crazy. It's the silliest section of road ever. Um, the radar cruise is great. Super, oh, man, there's a truck there. That's going to ruin our fun, man. I don't think that's going to work out. Old Tundra. Not going to work out. We're going to have to just U-turn it again. So that's the turning radius. This is what happens, guys. When the charge network keeps you from getting out here earlier in the morning. Oh man, should we get, should we get into that or do you want to save it for the end of the when we When we come to a complete uh, stop, we will go to the charge network, but we'll just go back this way. I like the dynamics a lot. And it is really like, you know, you can drive really fast when you factor noise out of it. It flows really nice. This road has a lot of little ups and downs that yeah. would unsettle, you know, a less composed car. Yeah, I'm and, I've been very impressed with this car from like top to bottom, with you know very few exceptions. I'm yeah, really impressed with it. Me too. I mean, this is like my favorite American car since the C8 Corvette. Um, and man, I mean, this might be the most impressive car I've driven this year in terms of a first effort from a major manufacturer to to actually. Uh, not be super caught up in their old school. Like the Jaguar I Pace mm -hmm. is a nice car, but it uses like the standard infotainment that the Jaguars use, and it's not like a it's not like a wholly new out of the box thought kind of thing. Right. right. This is a, a completely fresh piece of paper. And like, uh, other than the name, that was actually good. that was nice. That was very good. You could feel just the you could feel just the touch. And uh, it really feels like a very solid, uh, complete, thought, well thought out product. Um, like, I kind of want one. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I, I do kind of want one. Uh, it's like the driving experience is identical to a lot of your top end EVs. The suspension geometries are really good. Like, when I say the weak point is the shocks, it's really just because they're tuned for everyday comfort and not for this. But considering I that. Right, considering that, they're doing a very good job of this. And it, 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 it rode well over all of LA's terrible roads. Yeah. It soaks up bumps really well. I like the, I like the app design. The, the whole interface here is very clean looking. It looks really new. I mean, it looks like a, a good phone. Uh, it does, yeah. It's and, not like, it took me a little extra time compared to Tesla to get used to it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like now that I'm used to it, it's totally simple and straightforward and yeah. good. It's been easy to read daytime, nighttime. And I really, I'm glad they put this other little screen right there because what I didn't like about Tesla is having to look over to my right just to see how fast I was going, just to see the basic information I need when I'm driving and I want to know quickly. Because you look at your Speedo a lot. Exactly. So this stays out of the way. It doesn't obstruct your view. It's not this huge binnacle like a, a normal gauge is. It's a really clean look, but it just gives you that information. I think that's really smart. It's while you bring that up, the only real difference I see from when you're sitting here and operating it between this and a Model 3 is that the Model 3's dash is like two and a half inches lower. Mm -hmm. And so when you're driving this and sitting in it, it's it's like you're uh, you know, it's it's more like a, a normal car, like a regular car. Whereas in a Model 3, you've actually got more of an experience like you're driving almost like a mid-engine supercar because it's so low. Right, because so the cowl drops away so right, quick. Right, it drops away so quick. And if you were to park a Model 3 or even a Model Y next to this car, you can see how it's sculpted. They've Because they've really tried to do this sort of Mustang hood 
is, it's I think, It's also a little bit they... FX35, if you look at the profile. <laughs> it kind of yeah. is. But I, I think it is a better looking car from the profile than the Model 3 and Y, partly because it, it's hard. It's form and, and function. Like, the Model Y has that droop, that, that right. drop in that hood, and it makes the car look a little strange to me. GT3 RS. <laughs> it's always worth pausing for that. Um... <laughs> But uh, I saw him in the mirror. He was coming yeah. in hot. <laughs> but uh, I think this feels, I mean, even for a pre-pro car, like it's made better than a, than most of the Teslas I go in. The seats are more comfortable. I like the good. shape of them better. Mm -hmm. the, the, the leather feels higher quality, at least than the Model 3 and S I drove. It, had, it felt like a really thin yeah. saran wrap, almost like leather. Um, this, fi this also finds really the nice. balance between storage and minimalism a little better. Yeah. Tesla is a little more towards minimalism, and other cars are a little more towards storage. But like this finds a really nice balance. So, yeah. I mean, we have to we have to say like bravo. Like this is really nice. <laughs> yeah. Shockingly nice. The bad part is the public charging network is still a complete disaster. And uh, and uh, it it just finding a charge is uh, hard. It's just hard. I mean, like, the, the, the quick and dirty is we went to three different charging stations today trying to get charged quick enough to come and make this video. Yeah. And, you know, the first one, we, and part of it is we didn't look at what the charging speed was when we found it on the map. We just went, oh, it's the right one. It'll fit this car. And we went to it, and it was a slow one. And then the next one we went to had a different fitting. Yeah. So it was it, a fast one, but with the wrong but, fitting. But for the wrong eight set of manufacturers. So, like, if you have one of these, you will very quickly have to get up to speed on what plug works with your car and what network or which locations have those plugs. Because yeah. just because it's a charge point station, it might have plugs that work with you or don't work with you or it might have plugs that work with you but are just too slow to be usable mm -hmm. um so evs in my experience which admittedly is as a tester and i owned a volt uh, uh, for a little while you got to have a home or an apartment or an office you go to regularly where you can plug it into if you don't have that it's still not there because the public infrastructure sucks if you're a tesla it's better. Yeah, if you're because a Tesla, it's at least fine. you you see Tesla you see a Tesla station and you pretty much know what you're getting. This is a problem with EVs compared to a gas station. Gas station, you're driving around, sign on the road says gas. You pull in, you know the nozzle will fit in your car and you know how you, much gas is probably going to flow from it you, you, every minute. Give or take, you know how fast it's going to flow. Yeah. Give or take, you know, you know what I mean? It's not like, okay, well, find one that fits my car, find one that flows at the speed I need to flow it at. Am I, do I have the correct app to use this program? Right. Is there that, enough cell service in yeah. the area? We had a slowdown where it was like Wi-Fi too slow. And then another one, uh, we were trying to use this charger and two spots away was a different one and the phone was trying to connect to that charger. Right. So there's a lot of these little things that add up to, in our experience, 30 minutes a day. Right. You can't just dip a credit card and get juice. You can't pay a, a dude right. cash and get juice. You have to be connected. And so that allows for surveillance capitalism as well. So you can't, you cannot use a public charging network without being involved somehow in a level of surveillance capitalism. And getting into the system. And so, yeah, you are, you're in a system. And so, and, and, and with this car, I've been using the key as a, a phone as a key feature, which I promised myself I would use for purposes of testing. And if I owned this car, I would absolutely not use. Why? Fortunately, because it's just not, it's just another point of failure, whereas I was never in my life inconvenienced by a key fob. That was not... First, a turnkey was not an inconvenience, and then a fob was not an inconvenience. This, this to me, is a system where the technology has gone too far, mm -hmm. and it's now, it now because the phone is a point of failure, and not just the phone itself, but the phone's data, cellular or Wi-Fi connection is a point of failure, True. whereas carrying a fob, which Ford gives you with the Mach-E, you get a regular fob too, is not at all an inconvenience to me. I agree. I so, agree with you. I'm so, I can't. Overall, staggeringly good product. I mean, really good. Yeah. Couple little things to work out, some of which have nothing to do with the car itself. The charging network. Right. The, you know, the phone as a key system is a pervasive thing. It's not, it's not just this car. I've had similar kind of issues in Teslas and other things with phone as a key system. Right. I you just know, don't and, love that and, system. And the car specific stuff, this kind of lands in terms of size and price 
it's right in the middle. It's cheaper than the Audi. It's also a little bit uh, shorter, but it has more interior volume. They yeah. all landed within like an inch or two of each other. And this yeah. actually has more rear seat room than almost all of the competition. The back uh, seat is good in this. The back seat's very good. A, this is a really good car. It's a good car. They, um, they've really found the sweet spot in terms of wheelbase, length, all of those things. Yeah. And I so, think it looks really good. I think it's very good looking. Me too. Uh, so thank you to Ford for letting us have a go for a week and not just for like a day or something. I think having that week did make a big difference to really get to know the car. Mm -hmm. Thank you to you for sitting through a long video. If you've made it this far, thank you to Bremont, our new watch sponsor. Zach and I are going to be, you guys talk about watches on the, on the comments a lot, what watches we're wearing. And Zach and I have a Bremont ambassadorship for 2021. So you're going to see me rocking the world time and Zach rocking his GMT chrono. So check out Bremont and uh, we'll see you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the off the record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.